John chapter 1. John 1, 21. We're going to get into an interesting study today. Lord God, the Father, just ask you to bless this time, Lord, with your word, Lord God. And help us and guide us, Lord, and to the things of our life, whether it be fishing, Lord, and boats, or healing, Lord, and growing, and but Lord, most important, that we grow inside you, Lord God, that you be well pleased with us. Lord, for Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. All right, John chapter 1, verse 21. They're talking to John the Baptist. They want his credentials. And they ask him, say, what then? Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Now next week we'll look at that, that prophet. So we're stuck in verse 21. He says, Art thou Elias? Now, I am not one for the Hebrew and Greek. The Hebrew and Greek is why I didn't go to one school. But there are Hebrew and Greek words in the Bible that God wants us to know. Like, on the cross, Jesus said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sedecti. Well, there's some Greek that God wants us to know. And here... It says Elias, that's Greek, that's the Greek spelling in the Greek, the Greek name for Elijah. And that's who the man we're going to look at today, we're going to look at the man Elijah. Now Elijah, next week, Lord willing, be Moses, or the prophets. I think we look at the prophets and Moses. Oh no, we'll look at Moses next week, Lord willing. And Elijah and Moses are the two main men outside of Abraham in the Jewish history. Abraham's the father of the Jews. Moses, he's the lawgiver. And Elijah's that prophet of all the prophets. Now Moses and Elijah are coming back in the tribulation period. And we'll look into that in a moment. But... We're going to look at the man Elijah, and now we're not going to look at all 69 times in the Bible. And 63 verses, we're not going to look at it. We're going to look at the main characteristics of Elijah, but he's an important man, and he was the one taken up in the whirlwind. It was him and Elijah, and there's Elisha. And that gets hard. When you're trying to preach, and you're up there, you're talking about Elijah and Elisha. You get, I even get messed up. And then people can look at it like, okay, I said Elijah, and said Elijah, or said Elijah, and said Elijah. And Elisha takes over Elijah. So, uh, let's take the first place of 1 Kings 17, verse 6. Now, Elijah just shows up on the scene. Boom, here he is. No, I mean, I know he was born, but just one day he, opened, he, un, he unfolds and here he is. First Kings First King 17, verse 6. And if you look at 17, verse 1 real quick, and Elijah the Tishbite, who was in the inhabitants of Gilead sent unto Ahab. Boom, there he is. He just shows up. Melchizedek just shows up. The 17 verse 6. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Now Elijah has called for a famine in the land. He's called for no water. Elijah stops the rain. And God says, okay, go off to this brook, and I'm going to take care of you. And Elijah is fed by ravens during this period. God tells a bird, go get some food and bring it to Elijah. It's a miracle. So Elijah is protected by God. And then he comes to the next miracle, where the, the river 
it's failing because there's no rain. The river is drying up. In the same chapter, chapter 17, verse 15, and what we have here is verse... Uh, I don't want to get, there's so much to look at right now. Verses 4 to 17, Elijah shows up to this Gentile widow woman, and the famine is so strong in the land. She's like, Elijah walks up to her and says, listen, give me some, uh, verse 10, look at 17.10. So he rose and went to Zarephath. And when he came into the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he called and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. She said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. Behold, I gathered two sticks, I may go and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and dry. So I only got two sticks here. I don't need a big fire. I'm going to go get some stick. I'm going to start a fire. I'm going to cook our leftover meal with the oil I have. And then we're going to die. This is how bad the famine is. In verse 13, Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go and do as thou hast said. Get the stick, start a fire, and make a meal. But make me, make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after me for thee and thy son. The woman that said, I ain't got enough for you. <laughs> I ain't got enough for me and my son. And, and you know, she's going to make more for her son, because that's a mother's love. But after we're done with this, sir, we're going to die. And Elijah said, make me first, and then yourself, and then your son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail unto the day that the Lord sendeth rain on the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake to Elijah. So that's another miracle by Elijah, and this is one of the miracles of Elijah. I don't know if they ever tried to peek in that meal and see what happened, but that barrel didn't go dry. And she was able to make the cakes, able to get the water, and they were able to, to survive on what God provided through Elijah. So Elijah is not only a prophet, but he's also a miracle by God. And so he's fed by the, by the ravens at his drought. And James tells us that Elijah said no rain. It was for three and a half, I think three and a half years. Why? Because, the, because uh, Israel and North, they're living in sin. They're not doing right. And it's just a judgment of God like what we're going to see in America pretty soon. Not listening, not doing right. Jeremiah is the same way when he's preaching to Judah. Listen, you guys need to get right. No, we're going to do the queen of heaven. No, you got to get... And this got worse and worse and Babylon came. It's a judgment of God when the people won't listen. So being a prophet of God, God's taking care of The ravens fed him. I want you to go talk to this widow woman. I want her to take care of you. And because she's taking care of Elijah for God, she and her son are being taken care of. Now there's another thing here. Uh, 1 Kings 17, 15. He's fed here in 17, 15 by the woman. 1 Kings 19, 5. Now, 19, and like I said, we're, we're doing, we can't go fully into Elijah. I mean, we would have to go and study 1 Kings. If the Lord give us time and space, we would sometimes. But Elijah's gone into depression. 
He's had the battle with the prophets on Mount Carmel, the prophets of Baal. Jezebel has heard about him, the prophets of Baal, and slain those prophets. Jezebel sends a threat to him, and Elijah runs off to the mountains, and he's scared, he's frightened, and it happens to all of us. And 1 Kings 19.5, the Bible says, As he laid and slept on the juniper tree, getting rest, behold, an angel touched him, said, Arise and eat. And he looked, behold, there was a cake of there was cake baking on the coal, a cruise of water at his head, and he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him, said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he rose and did eat and went to the strength of meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. He's not eating. He's been sleeping. Depression. Angel comes over and says, listen, here's some food. So he's fed by ravens. He's fed by a widow woman. And now he's fed by an angel. He knows that 40 days and 40 nights, he's going to be without food again. And Mount Horeb, that's where Moses was. 40 days and 40 nights. Twice. With God when he got the law in the, tab in the tablet. You're going to find Jesus 40 days and 40 nights fasting on the mountain. And that's very particular information to know because Moses and Elijah and Jesus are three men that are like each other. And that's one of the reasons why when they came to John the Baptist, okay, we're looking for the Messiah. Are you Elijah? Well, no, I'm not Elijah. See, they're looking for a prophet. We'll look at next week, Moses, Lord willing. They're looking for a man that's like Moses and they're looking for a man like Elijah. Jesus has not yet come to the 40 days and 40 nights. Once he's baptized by John the Baptist, then it's the 40 days and 40 nights of fasting. Like we see here. Um, he's fearless, but he has depression. Look at 1 Kings 18, 17. Now this is the story of he's on Mount Carmel with the prophets. Chapter 18, verse 17. Before Jezebel says, I'm going to kill you. Evidently, Jezebel was really fearful and really serious about his business for a prophet to have the, the no fear he has now. And then when he finds out Jezebel is out to get him, you, under, you underestimate the power that Jezebel was in her wickedness. That a prophet of God, oh, I've got to get out of here. She'd be like the Mary of Scots or Bloody Mary, killing Christians all over the place, left and right. So we see the fear of this prophet in verse 17. It came to pass, Ahab saw Elijah, and Ahab said, Art thou the trouble with Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, and I have forsaken the commandments of the Lord. Thou hast followed Baal. That's a false god. Elijah's talking to Ahab. Ahab is the king of Israel. I would not even have enough. I mean, if Donald Trump came up to me, I wouldn't ball him out. I would respectfully say, sir, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Elijah shows up to a king. You're the wicked one. You're the one that's the trouble. You're the one that's sinned. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel and Mount Carmel. And the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, and eat at Jezebel's table. See, there's Jezebel. These are Jezebel's prophets. This is why she got angry. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long between two opinions? If the Lord, if the Lord be God, follow him. 
And if Baal, then follow him. If God is God, you follow him. If Baal, who you serve, if that's God, okay, we'll follow him. This is the same message America has been getting preached many years. It's Jesus Christ and no other. Absolutely nobody else but Jesus. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I, only remain the prophets of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Well, you're not the only one, Elijah. There were 400 previously, but... Now Elijah's come to the prophets of Baal and he's preaching to them. I've done that. I've gone up to Roman Catholics. I've gone to Jehovah Witnesses. You've gone up to Jehovah Witnesses. I've gone up against all kinds of religions. That's exactly what Elijah's doing. And hey, your God's wrong. This is what the Bible says about your God. This is what the Bible says about God. I go up to Jehovah Witnesses all the time. Thomas said, my Lord, no, shut up and listen. Thomas said, my Lord, my God. You say Jesus is not God. You're wrong. No, shut up. I don't want to listen to what's your Bible. I am telling you what the Bible says. And you've done it too. I've gone up to Catholic priests and say, call no man your father. No, you shut up. I don't care about your tradition. I don't care about that Pope. The Bible says, call no man your father. And we've done the same thing that Elijah's doing, and people say, oh, you're rude, you're crude, you're unkind. Hey, Elijah did it. Elijah's looking at those prophets and saying, hey, if God be God, Jehovah, follow him. If your God be God, follow him. I'll tell you what, we'll put him to a big test. He says, let them therefore give us two bullocks. Let them choose one bullet for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood, and put no fire under it. Now, he knows how he says, put no fire under it. You know what the magic trick is? They put a little spark in there, when nobody's looking. And they'll blow on it. Oh, look at that, see the fire came. That's what magic is. Magic is deceiving. Just put no fire under it. I will dress the other boy and lay the wood, and put no fire under it. And call on the name of your gods. Small g. And I will call upon the name of the Lord, all capital. And the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered said, it is well spoken. And Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose you one bullet for yourself, and dress it first, for ye are many. And look at the sarcasm. And people say, well, you're, you know, I got the, I got the Elijah complex. I'm sarcastic. Hey, you guys are so many here, you go first. You know, that's what he's saying. And call on the name of your gods, plural, but put no fire under it. Don't put no spark underneath that thing. And they took the bullet, which was given to them, and they dressed it and called the name of Baal from morning even unto noon. That's why most churches get out at noon. That's a Baal service, noon time. Didn't know that was in the Bible, did you? Soon saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any answer. And they leaped upon the altar that, which was made. Dancing. And you, if you see any African films of what they do with their gods and all that, it's the same thing they're doing here. It's dancing on the altar. You see Native Americans doing it. And it came to pass at noon. Service time over. And Elijah mocked them. You ought not to pick on other religions. Elijah is. And when people say, you ought not to pick on people's religion, just say, and you don't know what the Bible says. Let's say it with a smile. That gets them really angry. And Elijah mocked and cried aloud, for he's a God. Either he's talking. <laughs> Or he's pursuing. Or he's in journey. Or pre-adventure, you've got a God that's sleeping. And must be awakened. Hey, hey! Call your God louder. He might be talking to somebody who can't hear you. Or your God may be going somewhere else. Your God may not be everywhere like Jehovah is. He's ranking on him. He's putting them down. 
Don't tell me when I pick on other gods. Uh, uh, that's Elijah. You imagine they're getting angry. And they cried aloud and cut themselves with manner of knives and lances till the blush gud gushed out upon them. That's called penance in the Catholic Church where you cut yourself and go on broken glass or walk in fire as a coal. You're harming, you're maiming yourself to try to get God's attention. That's Baal worship. You know, where people cut themselves, put earrings and all kinds of junk in their body. That's verse 28. That's Baal worship. And it came to pass when midday was passed after noon service, they prophesied unto the end of the offering at the evening sacrifice, 6 p.m., there was neither voice nor any answer nor any that regarded. Baal didn't answer. And Elijah's over there, like, yeah, 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 yeah. where's your God? Where's the fire? Come on, let's have barbecue. Church service is over. Is the steaks done? It's too raw. Hey, it's new time. We've got to eat. Where's your food? That's what they would have done. They would have eaten their sacrifice themselves. I mean, so Elijah, verse 30. Now you see, Elijah, he's mean, he's cruel, he's sarcastic. But he's speaking the truth. Your God's a loser. Don't tell me I'm wrong when I preach like that. So Elijah said unto him, verse 30, I don't know the people, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes and sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, I, Israel shall be thy name. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. <coughs> he made a trench about the altar, as great it would contain two measures of seed. He built a hole. All right, a moat around the altar. He put the fire in order, I mean, he put the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid him, the bullock, on the wood. And he said, Fill four barrels of water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. He's got the altar, he's got the wood, he's got the bullock, it's all, he says, Get four barrels of water and drench it. There's been a, a, a drought. There's you're using the last of the water that we have. And he said, do it the second time. He meant the people, you've been ranking on our God all, all morning long. Now you want to get what little water we have and put it on the altar twice? Do it the second time. They did it the third time. And they did it the third time. This altar... The wood and the, the, the oxen are soaking wet of water. And the water ran around about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering, the eating sacrifice, Elijah the prophet came near and said unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, Let it be known this day that thou art the God of Israel, and that I am thy servant. And he is, that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me. For this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood. The stones were burnt, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the That's a miracle. That fire is devouring the stones and licking the water and the sacrifice. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their face and said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. And Elijah said, Take the prophets of Baal and let not one of them escape. And they took them. And Elijah brought them down to Brook Kishon and slew them. Elijah killed them. Worshipping a false god, deceiving the nation of Israel, you're dead. And then he puts a challenge that only God can do. 
Now, do you see what kind of man did? Are you John the Baptist? Are you Elijah? And you know what they want there at the River Jordan? They want fire to come down from heaven. They want to see miracles. And there are times in Jesus' life, they're going, well, you know, show us a miracle from heaven. Show us a Moses. Show us an Elijah. Now, under Moses also was fire called down. Many times, one time fire came down and burnt the people up because they disobeyed God. So here's the power. And 1 Kings 21.20 1 Kings 21.20 Elijah again, all about Elijah. Again, it says, They have said unto, that's the king, said unto Elijah, has thou found me, O my enemy? And he answered, I have, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thy work, that I have sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Now you're not going to find a Christian to say that to President Trump if they were to shake his hand today. Say that again. If a Christian came up to Donald Trump, he would not say, You're 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 a sinner. And you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They were, ooh, ah, my hero. The other day, I caused a ruckus. Well, what happened if, if, you know, if you were invited to pray? I tell him he needs to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And I know preachers who have run into fame. I know a preacher ran into, uh, all right, as soon as I was going to say it, the name went out. Janet Reno. That time of date, the branch of the video. I know a preacher that came up, shook hands with Janet Reno and said, you, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And God will give you those opportunities. Here's Elijah before the king. He's a wicked king. His wife is Jezebel. And he walks up to the king and says, you're the troublemaker and you need to get right with God. That's what Nathan did to David. Nathan said, here's this parable of a man. And David says, this guy, man, he owes me. And Nathan says, thou art the man. We don't have enough Christians who will do that today. We need more Jeremiah than we need more Ezekiel if you want to see a revival in America. We need somebody to walk up to the President of the United States and walk up to, uh, what's her name, the Speaker of the House, and walk up to the people and say, coronavirus is of God, repent and get right. Or you're going to get a lot more. Need somebody to stand up with all these riots that are going on in this country today and say, it's because of sin and it's because you rejected God. The Bible says you're supposed to correct your children, get evolution out of school, put creation back in the school, put the Bible and prayer back in the courthouse. But no one's tried since. They won't even stand up Roe versus Ray. They won't even stand up against abortion. They will not stand up the Word of God is not allowed in school. They won't even stand up with evolution... You're not going to get no revival because no one's standing up. And when I stand up and preach the word of God in Daytona Beach about their sins and about Jesus Christ, they call the police on me and try to shut me up. And when I preach about hell, we've had Christians who have come part of us. You preach about hell and they walk away. And not ever to come back to the ministry. And those two people going into to vacation Bible where we paint the faces and we have good old times with the kitties, but we're not going to preach to hell. Well, that's not Elijah. That's not Elijah preaching. That's a pantyweight preacher. And we got enough of them. So, chapter 17, verse 20. Chapter 17, verse 20. One good thing about Elijah, he's, we don't really have to go far much in the Bible. He's 1720. The widow's son has died. The one who said, hey, hey we're going to make you cakes. Here's some water. I don't know what's going on with that barrel, but we're going to have another, more cakes this afternoon. We're going to have more cakes this supper. We're going to have more cakes. For, forget it. I'm not looking no more. We're just going to have people on having cakes. I don't know how God's doing it, but the same amount of... Listen, that, there was no more meal than it was the first day he met her, but we're making cakes. Her son has died. 
Verse 20. And he, Elijah, cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, Hast thou brought evil upon the widow with whom I have sojourned by slaying her son? Look at God. Elijah said, God, you killed her. What's wrong with you? You don't want to mess with Elijah. And believe me, God's not going to send Elijah to America. America couldn't handle it. But there he is, he's praying. And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, praying, I pray thee, let the child's soul come into him again. He's dead. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. And the soul of the child came into him and he revived. Resurrection. That's another miracle. You know what Jesus does in his ministry? He resurrects dead bodies. I don't think Moses ever resurrected a dead body. I think that's one thing that Moses didn't do. But he prays that, God, you killed this child. She's helping us. Bring life back into that child. That's a prayer life. And I don't think Elijah went to the bookstore and got books on how to pray. He just went out and prayed. And God heard him. And God answered him. The rude, crude sarcastic preacher that picks on other people's religion, God answers his prayer. We need more of these preachers, but we ain't going to get them. So he's mighty in prayer, 1836. 1836. Again, this is, this is the battle of Baal. 1836, and came to pass the time to offer the seat. He even sacrificed. Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, here's his prayer, Isaac and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God of Israel, that I am thy servant. Look at that one. Here he's got these people of Baal all around. Lord God the Father, I'm here in your stead. Will you show these idiots that I'm your man? Whoosh, answer of God. Was there a resurrection? No, there was fire from heaven. Now, I can't do that. I'm not in the Old Testament. I'm under grave. I mean, I can't say, okay, Lord, we're going to have a barbecue. Let fire come down. It ain't going to happen. I can hold my breath all day. God answered Elijah in a prayer for a, a child that died and there was resurrection. God said, hey, I'll answer your prayer. Elijah said, hey, I got all these idiots and, and Catholics and, and this ecumenical movement around me. I need some fire, Lord. I need to pray that, God, you show these people I am your prophet and your God. And, well, whoosh, and a miracle fire came down. Elijah's a man of prayer. And they come to John the Baptist. Are you Elijah's? You know why? Because they want a, 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 a pony show. And they do it to Jesus. Jesus, you know, it shows a sign from heaven. They didn't want the Messiah. They want a, a, a playtime. They want <coughs> a vacation Old Testament school. That's what they want. They wanted face painting. They wanted shows. They wanted things from it. They wanted a spectacular show. And that's what even Herod later on in the Gospel will say. Herod wanted to see Jesus do a performance. That's not the man of God. These vacation Bible schools, they're all nonsense, they're all playtime. We need preaching. There is no preaching. That's why the churches are closed in America today. You need to get up and say, you're a sinner, and unless Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. And don't eat Jesus. That's cannibalism. Me, the truth. I get Christians get mad at me because I preach the truth. And all I preach is Jesus. I've been kicked out of churches because of their playtime activity. It's wrong. It's wrong. I can see Peter. What? We're going to have face painting? And we're going to do arts and crafts? I can see Jesus doing that. It's ridiculous. Um, 
and discouragement. 1 Kings 19, 3 and 4. This is, this is Elijah. And I've had people tell me, listen, I've, I've gone through two widowhoods. I've had two wives that, oh, if you're such a man of God, if you're so strong in religion, you ought not to be feeling what you feel. And I tell them, shut up and read your Bible. Don't talk to me like that. What? I just told you to read your Bible. What's wrong with that? You don't study your Bible. Look at 19, 3 and 4. All right, let's, let's, let's do verse 1. 19, 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. He just killed her prophets. And with how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. And Jezebel sent messengers unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods, gods do to me more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them tomorrow about this time. Do you see the death threat? My prophets are dead, Elijah. Tomorrow, this time, you're going to be just like them. Dead. Now, how serious is Jezebel? Verse 3. And when he, Elijah, saw that, saw what? She said it. It didn't say when he heard that. He said when she saw that. When he saw, there's something she did. Not heard what she did. He saw something that she did. He arose and went for his life. You mean the one that just killed all these prophets? The one that God answers his prayer and he's running. He's running for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. He runs all the way down south. He got out of Dodge. And he himself sat a day's journey in the wilderness, came to and sat underneath a juniper tree. He requested for himself that he might die. I've been there. And said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take my life. I've been there. For I am not better than my father. And then he laid asleep, and we read about that with the angels. And people said, Well, you ought not to feel like that as a. Elijah had more power than I did. I can't call fire down. I can't kill nobody. And yet Elijah felt the same way. He yielded to discouragement. Um, Second Kings two eleven. Second Kings two eleven. This is all about Elijah. And it came to pass, as they went on, they talked, and behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up into the whirlwind, into heaven. He was raptured. The prophet that spoke bold, the prophet that, that had uh, uh, sarcasm, the prophet that angered the religion, the prophet that angered church service, the prophet that angered kings, the prophet that angered queen, the prophet was honored by God, and God gave him a rapture. That's kind of interesting. The miracles that he'd done, there was drought. First Kings 17, 1 Kings 17.1. And let's look at James chapter 5, verse 12, about that. You ain't going to get a, a, a revival in America with the, with the sissy preaching you get today. There ain't no preaching repentance. They ain't getting right with God. You got more bars opening than bars closing. Them days are over with. You're not going to put God back in the schools. And then unless you put God back in the school, you ain't going to have no revival. 517, James. Elias, there he is, Greek. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. Fear, anxiety, hunger, thirst, got tired, got weary, and he prayed, there's prayer, 
earnestly in the May not rain, and it rained not on the earth for a space of three years and six months. And you know what he says? Get three, four barrels of water, four barrels of water three times, and dump it on that thing. And then prophets are just licking their chops. That's our drinking water. He causes the drought, 1 Kings 17, 1. We just read it in James 5, 17. The meal and the oil we read about, 1 Kings 17. The child's resurrection we read about, 1 Kings 17. The sacrifice in the fire we read about, 1 Kings 18. And then 2 Kings, I don't know what that is. Right here. Well, there's, a, there's, there's twice or three times a captain sent by the king, and he's got his army, and they're burnt by fire from heaven by Elijah. Second Kings. One. What? One. I don't know. I can't believe it. Oh. <laughs> Second Kings one, maybe. There's verse 10, let fire come down from heaven, consume thee in the pit thee. First Kings 1. Oh, I get there. First Kings 1. This is the power of life. And he ran from a queen. First Kings 1.10. Kings 10. Second. 2 Kings 1 10. Know now that there shall fall unto the earth nothing of the word of the Lord, which the Lord spent concerning the house of Ahab, the Lord had done that which was as spoken by his servant Elijah. And Jehu slew all that remained in the house of Ahab and Jezebel, and all his great men and kinfolks, his priests. He had left, so they get knocked out, they get killed. Uh, so there's a time that, that there's fire that calls down from heaven again upon a military men of Elijah. Then the rain came, verse Kings 18. Elijah calls for the drought. Then Elijah called, okay, Lord, let it rain now. 2 Kings 2.28. 2 Kings 2.28. Kings 2.28. Oh, I got this all messed up. Alright, well, verse 13. 2 Kings 2 13. And he took up the mantle of Elijah. No, no, I mean, before that, it's Elisha. Oh. Alright, verse 8. 2 Kings 2 8. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smoked the waters. That's Jordan. They were divided hither and thither, so that they went two over on dry ground. You know, you read about the Red Sea. Moses part of the Red Sea. Elijah's at the Jordan River. He smites the Jordan River in the water, and they go on dry ground. And you're wondering when they say, Art thou Elias? If John would have said yes, which he was, but if he would have said yes, all right, park the waters right here. Show, well, show what Elijah done. 
Elijah and Moses took a body of water and, and God divided those waters and they went on dry land. You don't find dry land at the bottom of water. And all right, if you're taking a body of water and you're to dam that water or dry that water up, that ground is still going to be wet. Not for Moses and Elijah does it afterwards still. Elijah is a mighty man of God. Malachi chapter 4, last book of the Old Testament. And we looked at this last week. The last three names in the Bible. Malachi chapter 4. In verse 2, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son, capital S, the right. There's Jesus Christ. There he is. Verse 3. And ye shall tread down the wicked, they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. And in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts, Remember ye the law of Moses, there's Moses, my servant, when I commanded him Mount Horeb, that's where Elijah went, 40 days, 40 nights, for all Israel the statutes of behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and coming day. So here comes John the Baptist, he's baptizing, preparing the way for the Messiah, and they're like, okay, who are you? Are you Elias? Why did they say Elias? Because they're waiting for the Messiah to come. Now the first advent of Jesus Christ has been rejected by the Jews. Up to Acts chapter 7 when they killed Stephen. Pretty much the doors opened to Gentiles and the, the nation of Israel has been set aside. And, and Jesus said that if they re received John the Baptist, he would have been Elijah. Moses and Elijah are coming back in the tribulation before Jesus comes back, before the second advent. Before. Before. Moses and Elijah will be alive, and, and Moses and Elijah said they'll be turned to waters of blood, which Moses did. And they'll be saying there's drought in the tribulation period, which Elijah does. And then the next great event is the coming of Jesus Christ. So in John chapter 1, verse 19, John chapter 1, verse 19, it's a bold step between 20 and 21. John 1, 19, this is the record of John. John the Baptist. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem and asked them, said, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ, the Son of Righteousness. And they asked him, Art thou Elias? There he is, there's a light. They're waiting for the coming of the Lord. He's there. He's about to show up. The problem is. The problem is, they didn't see the suffering Messiah. They wanted the conquering Messiah. They wanted, they, he, they wanted Jesus to come and kick Rome's butt. He didn't come to kick Rome's butt. Not the first time. He came as a suffering Messiah to suffer and die on the cross for our sins. And when he did not conquer Rome, they gave him the cross. When he comes back the second time, he's going to conquer the nations in victory. And before he shows up, Moses and Elijah are going to show up together. And they're going to wreak havoc in the tribulation period. Let's check in here. And we'll be looking at 
Moses next week, Lord willing. But as the, as the rapture happens, this is after. After the rapture. Israel ruined it the first time by not receiving the Messiah. They ruined it. They ruined it. They didn't believe. They wanted, they wanted Jesus Christ to be the conqueror and not the sufferer. He came as the Lamb of God, but they wanted the Lion of God. That's next. Lord God the Father, I just thank you for this time. Lord, I just thank you for your word. I just ask you to bless us and help us and guide us, Lord, unto that faithful day when you call us home. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen.